Well, good morning, everybody. How are you? G'day. G'day. Yeah. That sounded, that sounded real. <laughs> Whoever said that. <laughs> good, good. So, uh, yeah, welcome. Um, my name's Tony Morris, for those of you who, did, you know, who weren't with me yesterday. Um, I live in a city called Brisbane in, on the east coast of Australia. Um, I, uh, I work for an organisation called the CSIRO. Commonwealth Research, Research Organisation, um, and uh, under that there's a, uh, the technology group is Data61. So uh, I do functional programming exclusively, that's all I do, been doing it for about 12 years. Um, I, uh, well, I guess when I first moved to Brisbane, I don't know, whatever it was, 15 years ago, I, was, I think I was the only person writing Haskell, but that was out of stubbornness with my uh, Java colleagues who insisted that I wire up the EJBs and I just refused and said no. I taught them all Haskell and nobody in my city wires up EJBs anymore. <clears throat> so I guess uh, yeah, there's a moral to the story which is all you got to do is teach other people how to, you know, people want to learn, help them learn, and it spreads. And now I write Haskell all day long. So yeah, you can do that too. So. Uh, basically, uh, we're going to be using uh, or exploiting a concept today called lenses. Um, I have a have a bit of a history in the lens in lens theory. Um, probably about I don't know, maybe six, five or six years ago, um, there were certain technical issues that lenses uh, presented to us, and I did not know how to solve them. Um, I wrote all sorts of nasty code to get around it. And Ed Komet, I'm sure you've all, if you haven't heard of him. You, you, you probably will sometime, uh, got very angry at me for my code and I was angry at myself for the same reason and wrote this library and said, this is how you solve all your problems. And I said, thank you, Ed. So um, there's a bit of history there to the way that lenses um, have developed. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've only run this sort of workshop uh, one or two times before. So. Um, it's, it's, you know, I rely a fair bit on your feedback on, on what it is you want to get out of it. Um, like I've spoken to Michael earlier this morning, I know what he wants to get out of it. Um, so yeah, I mean, throw it to you. Does anyone have anything specific they want to get out of it? Just want to know what, how lenses work? Or? Uh, traverses, prisms, all that. Right, yep, yep. Yep, so um, yeah, I mean, things like, uh, just to give you, again, a bit of history, right? So we all know, so it, it, the package is called Lens, and the reason it's, it's called that is a little bit historic, which is we happen to have solved that problem first. And traversals and prisms and so on came about afterwards. It turns out that they solve a lot of our problems as well. So uh, if we were to rename it, it would probably be something like, you know, optics or, you know, uh, functions A to, you know, S to, a to B, F, B, or, you know, I don't even know what to call it. But yeah, Lens is a historical name. So yeah, anything else? I mean, yeah, traversals and prisms, developing an intuition for it, I assume, and yeah. Anything else? How to use which? Right, okay. Yeah, so, <clears throat> I mean, I, I make an argument, at least my opinion is you, you really just can't write code without lenses. I, it's just, and by that I mean you can, it's just that you'll write the same code over and over. They're your two choices. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll try and, I'll, I'll do my best to make that case. Um, so I guess to get started, has everyone um, is everyone at this point, uh, and that is to say, whether you're using Stack or Cabal or, or neither, you have all the modules loading. Anyone not at that point? Okay. Put in. Um, and I'll come and have a look at you, at you in a minute. One other thing we discovered yesterday is due to my uh, physical disability at the moment, I'm unable to get to so some of you. So if you do have problems, you're going to have to bring your laptop up here. <laughs> Sorry about that. But that's just how it is. But I can get to you, so I'll do that now. Okay. Uh, just type GHCI and see what happens. <coughs> yeah, in the directory. Does it? Right, yeah, why not? Yep, sweet. Well, there we go. So, all right. Okay. <clears throat> so, 
So uh, I, I guess another question is, um, has anyone never used Haskell before? Never used Haskell? Okay, that's okay. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard, but that's all right. I'll do my best to make up for it. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's fine. We'll figure that out. Have you, what, what languages have you used, like Scala or something like that? Or Scala? Yeah, so fewer scripts um, has the advantage of being modern. So, <laughs> so has, has not made some of our historical mistakes, I guess. So in, in terms of lenses, that is, yeah. Uh, which is cool, right? I, I like watching other people learn from our mistakes. It's great. <clears throat> so uh, to get started, I guess, um, yeah, I, I've kind of... There's a you can start anywhere in this in the in these exercises, right? So I'll just I'll brief you on uh, the goal of some of these these uh, exercises. So what you're looking at here is a uh, uh, a representation of lenses that goes back to around I don't know maybe eight or nine years ago and earlier than that, um, where um, so first of all is, is um, the, who is not familiar with the concept of lenses at all? Like it's just something you've heard of and that's it. Is that most of you? Yeah, okay. So I'll, I'll just, I'll brief you on how this works. And for those of you who've not looked at Haskell, I'll do my best to explain what's going on here as well. So <clears throat> basically, um, uh, we, we, there, was, there was this problem, uh, it came from uh, database theory, where if you have a product type, okay, so you have... Uh, you know, a person has an, a name and an age and address, for example, and uh, you wanted to update the street name of the address of the person. And those, those of you who have, um, who have tried to use immutable data structures in whatever language it might be have, have probably recognized this problem where if you want to do an update nested down in, in a data structure, um, your code ends up peeling it all apart and putting it all back again. And uh, when you showed this code to your colleagues, they laughed at you and said, ha ha, why don't you just call the setter on my object or something like this? One line of code they showed you. And, and you said, There's, I, I, know that I, I know that I'm right with this immutable data structure, but my code looks awful. What am I going to do? And the answer to that question is use a lens. Okay, so I'm going to show, and, and, and this, historically, this, this demonstrates that. So to explain some of the syntax here, um, this lens, uh, so for those of you who have not used Haskell, these are called type variables. Um, so basically they're, uh, or generics they're sometimes called, or type parameters, or polymorphic values. They're basically saying this is a data type defined over A and then B. And here we've got one constructor, and that constructor's got two arguments. This first argument says it takes an A and then a B and returns an A. And you can think of that as like a set function in A. Set, like set as in set the value. So, for example, a, this here being a type, you might say, like, the lens is the person, B is the address. So, given a person and an address, return a new person. Okay? So, that sets the address in the person, as that example. And then also the get, which is given the person, return their address. Okay? And one of the, one of the key things which are, uh, we will get to see is uh, that lenses compose or... I know there's a category theory workshop going on somewhere, but this is also category theory um, in that lenses are a category. Um, and and uh, the definition of a category, um, or to give you like a, a, I guess a hack definition, is uh, if you've got a category from A to B, if you've got a value that's go, you know, defined over A and B, and then B to C, you can also get from A to C. So if you look up a category theory diagram, it's usually a uh, triangle. That is to say, if you can get from A to B, B to C, you can get from A to C. Um, and also it's on itself, there's an identity. So that is to say, if you've got a lens AB and a lens BC, you can get from lens AC. And uh, th this should be, I guess, pretty obvious that if you've got like a lens person and address, and you've got a lens address and street name, then you can get into the street name by composing the category, uh, as, as a category, composing. Okay, so that's what a lens is historically, the pair of a set and a get function and they compose and form a category. So, uh, one thing, actually, I know, I know someone, I think in the readme it tells you to install QuickCheck and DocTest, and I think some people were having problems with that. We're not gonna use that anyway, so sorry about that. These here are DocTests. 
um, I just advise you to, so for example, this is actually used to be an exercise, but the way you run this is you just copy it, and then you come over here into GHCI and you paste it, and you should see, well, you don't see anything, why not? Uh, okay, I'm going to have to figure that out in a minute. Right, eh? Actually, yeah, I probably should figure that out. Good question. Yep. Yeah, that, that, was, that question happened yesterday, but someone will have to get it for me. I think it's those switches there. Thanks, mate. Brilliant. All right. All right, so you can see here that this, this uh, when I run that test, I do not get the result zero. That's because one of the exercises is not filled in. But that's okay. So, so uh, th again, this is the uh, you know really outdated definition of a lens, and uh, lenses have to follow laws. So basically, this function should always return true given the definition of a lens. Uh, there's three laws. There they are. There. Um, and depending on the way you define your lens is also kind of dictates how you sort of lay out the exercises. So this is where they start here at a function called the modify function. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you would like to go down that path, start there. Um, and and, and uh, here's all the tests up here and get, get them cranking and uh, I'll help you out when you get stuck. So, I'll, I'll, so there's, there's two other ones, I'll show you those two. Uh, if I could, oh, actually, I think there's four other ones, or three other ones. There's this definition here. Um, so historically, one of, uh, a few of the problems with lenses were, first of all, um, uh, we had this problem called the polymorphic update problem. So uh, where we wanted to update the person's address, but in doing so, the type would change. It was not a person anymore. It, um, so there are certain practical use cases where we'd want to do that. Um, the other one is that we'd want to do partial or uh, take care of partiality through the update. So, for example, uh, you might have uh, like a JSON data structure and it might be a Boolean, but it might not be, as, as if you know about that data structure. And we'd want to update the Boolean. Let's say we want to negate it. But the problem is, is it may not be a Boolean to begin with. So we're not guaranteed that there's a Boolean in this data structure. So this idea of partiality. Um, and then the other problem, so that's where prisms come in, so in, in the more modern theories. Um, one of the other problems was multi-view. On uh, So, for example, you, again, you might have a JSON data structure with some number of strings nested in there somewhere, let's say, and you want to reverse them all. So you, you want this idea of multi-view, not, not just one view, which is what a lens provides you. You want many views into all the strings and reverse them all. And uh, that's where traversals in, in more modern theory have solved that problem. So lenses originally did not solve this. We knew there was a problem. We just didn't know how to solve it well. And we did all sorts of hacks. You can, I can show them to you and get a bit embarrassed and all that stuff. They're in the, they're in the code somewhere. So historically, um, yeah, uh, after that came along this, this definition here. Uh, where is that definition? Uh, there it is there. Uh, where this, we had this definition of a lens, and this, this is structurally equivalent to the previous one that I showed you. It's the pair of a, a getter and a setter. Um, the only difference is that um, some, some functions that come about from it are a lot more obvious. Um, so basically, a, so in terms of uh, terminology, by the way, I'll generally call this the target type. So the, thing, the type of the thing that we're targeting. And B here being the field type, uh, when it's a lens. So we see here we've got a function that goes from the target type to a store defined over the field and then the target type again. And the, st and the definition of a store, uh, if I can find the definition, is uh, it's there somewhere. But basically, it's a, it's a pair of a function and a value. And what that means is, it's a, it's, if, if you can think of this as a pair of a function and a value, and that function being b to a, so therefore we've got a function from a to b to a, and then just a value, which is A to B. All right, so that, that sets up the setter and the getter. Yeah? Is that store the state command? Uh, no. Um, 
it, it's what we used to call the state came on ad. Turns out we were wrong. But it, so, yeah, almost. Um, it, it is a co-monad um, in that it, uh, store B defines a, it has a co-monad instance, um, but it's not technically the dual of state. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, just more mistakes in, in history, which is one that I made. Um, someone sat down and scribbled it out on paper and said, hey, you're wrong. I said, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so here are the three laws. Again, so the get set law, this is just a general law of, uh, of lenses, and that is to say, if you, uh, if you do get and then you do set, uh, sorry, if you, if you get a value out of the target and then you set that value, you get back uh, the same target value. All right, so if you get something out and you put it back in, it's this, you've done nothing. Yeah? The font? Yeah. Sorry, I can't really see that. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, there's another law there, and then yeah, set set law, set law set set law just says if you set and then you set again, the previous one gets erased. It's the same as just doing it the, the outer one, things like that. Okay. Uh, I guess I can. This is not my laptop, by the way. So. <laughs> I, I very rarely use Macs, so forgive me if I screw up there. Uh, again, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It's on a so uh, it's at this repository here. Yeah. Um, Uh, not, in, not in a performance set, okay. uh, it's, it's context, but it does have to do nothing, okay. um, just in terms of um, equality. So it just should be the same program. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, I'm a little bit unclear on the difference between these. Uh, like, you talk about like, the evolution of lens, right? Mm -hmm. You started out with like, an eye solution, and you have to this one. Yep. And, uh, I see in this project there's at least three different modules for lens, mm -hmm. set lens. That's the first one you showed us, right? Right. That's the first try, yeah. And and and. I mean, we've got six hours together, right? So if I had an infinite time, I would say let's just start there. Yeah. And but it, it's it's I, I just want to put the question back to you and say, well, if if th what you're going to get out of it is you're going to get the history of uh, the historic, you know, see the problems of hi hi historically that we hit, um, and you're not going to solve them. So. If you believe that you can get those done in like just say two hours and then we can move on to the next ones and, and then you can start solving those problems, then sure. But you know, some people here haven't even used Haskell, so yeah, so it's it's more back to you. Um, what you what what it is you really want to get out of today. So if you if you want to look at um, lenses as they are today and you wanna you wanna start writing prisms and traversals and so on, then these are not the things for you. Yeah. But I'm I'm just giving you the just the history for those of you who wanna First of all, just get an understanding of what a lens even is, and what problems it solves. Um, so if yeah. We'll come back to each of these in a little bit more depth. I'm I'm happy to sit here and solve all these problems in front of you if you like. Yeah. Okay, I'm just curious what the plan is. Yeah, I, the, the plan is just for me just to tell you about all of these things. You make a decision about where you're going to start and get get going on the exercises, and you're going to trip and fall and bring your laptop up here and and all that kind of thing. So that's the plan. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, again, there's all these exercises in here. Modify is the first one. Uh, I think that's called set. Uh, modify through a functor and, and so on. Okay, and then uh, I think it was K to get that thing back. Uh, oops. Let's get my sidebar back for one moment. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, data61 is the correct one. Yeah, sorry about that. Well, I can tell you what they are, right? So I used to, NICTA is, the, is uh, what's called the National ICT of Australia. Um, and we used to be an independent, federally 
federal government funded research organisation, research and engineering organisation. Um, and CSIRO is a bigger research organisation in Australia that does more diverse areas of research, like um, you know, agricultural research and so on. And uh, the funding for NICTA ended um, a year and a half ago. And the way that was resolved was Data61 was created, which is what NICTA became, and then fell under the CSIRO. So all, all the references to NICTA are just because NICTA is now called Data61 under the CSIRO. And uh, yeah, I need to update links and I'm sure you'll find them here and there. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, right. Right. Yes. So this th this is, I guess, um, a, a, a picture of the magic moment when we solved all our prom problems with lenses, uh, or Ed, Ed did in particular. Um, and the reason is, is because this representation of a lens has been around for years. It's it was around you know, 15 years ago. It was written in a paper in the early 2000s, I think, um, by uh, Twan van Lehoven. And the realisation was that this solves all our problems, and we didn't realise that until, you know, a few years ago. Uh, but you'll notice that there's uh, not two type variables now, but there's four. That's because we solved the polymorphic update problem quite well here. Um, and you'll notice that uh, the definition is itself a function. All right, so and that is to say, uh, given a function a to f of b, and then s return f of t, such that uh, f is constrained as a functor. Uh, and it's, it's not immediately obvious why this is still a lens. Now, in terms of um, getting some good meat, some, something really good out of today, this is the realisation to get, and why this is a lens. All right, and, and I'll tell you how, right? So, and... Uh, or I'll, I'll try, do my best to show you how. So if you have a look at this F and you, you eliminate it, which you could by using the identity data structure, um, if you're familiar with that, you'll see that we have the modifier function. All right, so, and, and if we make A's and B's the same, just, so we're just going to get rid of polymorphic update for a minute, so it's A to A and then S to S, and we get rid of the F, this is the modifier function. All right, so that is to say... Uh, where, where S is the target type. So S might be a person. This is a function that takes address to address. That is to say, modify the address using the previous address, return a new person. And the interesting thing is that when you change this, uh, you get different properties about how that modification occurs, uh, which, was the, which was the main observation a few years ago. Um, and you can recover those get and set functions. Uh, so first of all, you can recover the get using making f into the const functor, if you're familiar with that. And uh, you can cover the, recover the set function by making, you know, if you make that identity, that is the same thing as eliminating it. And setting is the same thing as modifying without looking at the previous value. It's the same three laws. And there are the exercises. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe that there's sort of a diverse set of skills or, you know, some people have never used Haskell. Some people want to be convinced to use lenses, have written a lot of Haskell. So what I suggest we do is, um, is those of you who are comfortable to start writing some of these exercises, and that's probably none of you, but please be brave, give it a go. When you crash, come and see me, I'll help. Um, and for those of you who have never used Haskell, I think I'll just start telling you what Haskell is. How's that sound? So who, who's feeling brave enough to just start writing some code? Be honest. Thank you. That's great. Excellent. So can you give me an indication about where you intend to start? You're going to start there? Pardon? Okay. Start at the beginning. Okay. Is that the easiest? Yeah, in terms of the easiest, yes. Um, it, it, it's, you've got to make a trade-off between um, how much you want to get out of today and how much you're just going to sit there staring at your screen, right? So if you, if you, if you sort of come into this source file and you're staring at it and you're getting nowhere and, and so on, then yeah, sure. 
Um, if, if you can get through this, this more modern version, you will get more out of it, no question. Um, but if, if this sort of is, is a little bit too more too advanced, then the get set one, I believe, will probably be easier. So which is this model? This is uh, optic polylens. Um, and, the, and the reason it's called that is, first of all, this, is, this, this structure here is called an optic. And uh, poly being, it, it, it's uh, polymorphic, it allowing, allowing polymorphic updates. So is the idea we, uh, it, we can run like, tests with it and they'll all fail until we get to That's system. correct, yeah. What and uh, unfortunately, you have to manually run them. Um, so copy this, copy, and then uh, come over here. Make sure you, uh, you load the correct module. So I think it's like that. Uh, what did I call it? Uh, optic. Uh, so the, the reason I say that is because I cannot get everyone to install doc test successfully, and install and run. Right, so if I told you all to use doc test, 50% of you will fail for some reason. But so if you do succeed, then good for you. But yeah. <clears throat> right, so basically when I run this, so coming to GHCI, uh, import the module that you want to start at. So, I don't know, let's just say I want to start at uh, this one here. Uh, run one of the tests. I think I need to delete, I've got two of them in, in scope now. I need to delete one. And uh, start pasting those tests in and, and trying to get the, uh, uh, basically you want to run this, run this test here and get this result at the end. What's up? Ah, yeah, just learning to use this shell. Yeah, mate. I have a question about one of the um, examples here. Okay. Or, I'm not sure if it's like an error of my understanding or like a typo or something. But um, the first one here for that uh, modifier, right? Mm -hmm. Where plus is just a function from B to B. It's not a function from B to F to B. Is it? Uh, like, where's the functor in the first example? F modifier, lens, plus. Yeah, that is that 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 is correct. Okay, cool. So plus plus is a function from B to F of B. Really? Yeah. So if I set F to B arrow, right? Oh, the arrow is the functor. Yeah, B arrow in this case, or or num B arrow. Then I have a function B to B to B, which is plus. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so all functions take one argument, right? Right, so it's the functor definition for arrow. Yeah, the reader, the reader functor it's often called, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Cool. So, yep. So, yep. Uh, so uh, let's see if Runar. Oh, actually, I've checked already. Runar doesn't have it. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll I'll uh, install it. No. What I, what I'll do is uh, 
Uh, come on, fingers. Uh, I have no idea what. Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, you want to run doc test minus i source, because that's the sort to get all the dependencies in the source, and then the uh, path to the file name that contains them. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, just don't sit there stuck. If you if you are stuck, please come up here and show me your code. I'd or I'd come up there if I could. Um, I believe it is, yeah. Uh, oh, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. <clears throat> Where is FSTL though? That's not at the top. Right, yeah, it's it's not it's not from top to bottom. That's right. I've actually I actually remember now. I have had this problem before. Yeah, so that yeah, unfortunately, it's not in order. Right. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So, uh, I mean, the reason is is because when when I do things like this is because I I go and solve all the problems and then I run the tests. Um, and I realise that's not a good idea. That you know, I'm a hacker. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, there's going to be dependencies in the test, and sorry about that. Oh yeah, it's still way at the bottom. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, alternatively, I could look at your code and tell you. <laughs> um, usually, I can work out. I mean, what, one of the one of the good things about this is if it type checks, you might be right, probably right, not definitely right. And uh, this is, I just want to give you this link. Um, this, in, in my opinion, is just one of the, the most well-written introductions to Lens, if you're going to sit down and read about it. There's this article here by um, Ed Komet. Um, and and this, this, is, this goes into the, the more modern version of Lenses. In, uh, it basically talks about, um, you, you know, the idea being you come in with zero knowledge and you're going to derive Lenses yourself. Um, you know, what, what's the process that you'll go through? And, uh, I read this document quite a while ago, and uh, yeah, it's, it's quite excellent. Um, so, uh, people, they're, they're st so I know this person left, so there was someone else who had not used Haskell before. Over there, that was you, right? Okay. Um, that document? Yep. That's in, is... Um, I, can't, I can't, I don't know how to make this, no, this... This bigger. But, yeah, so github.com slash ecommit slash lens slash wiki slash derivation of the capital D. Yeah. Okay. It's under accessibility in the system Yeah. So you can do couple zooms like. Uh, if you go to the accessibility icon, it's a fourth row down. Uh, where's accessibility? Uh, 
the fun thing is some people in Schultz that that are like one of them like posted this little circular magnifying glass and call the road. Okay. So that what <laughs> I don't use Mac. So what what does that say? Shift 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 command eight. Control command eight. Alt command eight. There you go. All right. Control command eight. Sorry. Alt. Alt. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There we go. Well, he's made an account on there for me, so oh, right. I'm, I think I'm messing up my account on it. So that's cool. Yeah. So, so, so this is starting from a command line, right? So, GHCI. Uh, what have I just done wrong? What? Okay. I'll believe him. Okay. And then, then I Oh, hang on a minute. I've just screwed up big time. One sec, mate. Let's try that again. Oh, what did I just press? Oh, no. What happened? I don't understand what just happened. I know what's happening. Yes, that's happening. <laughs> okay. Here you go. I'm stuck. Okay. So I'm just. This is the modifier uh, on the get set yeah. lens. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we have. So I'm just trying to name the parameter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And FSTL was a lens, and down at the bottom it's, it's got a few other people. You said yep. a, a is the... A is the target type, so that, that's the thing we're modifying. Okay. B is the field, so the thing that we're... So it's a function from the field to the field, so that's the modification function. Yep, that's yeah, so basically, if, if I said to you, I have a pair of a get and a set, and I need to modify, I think you would say to me, well, first you've got to do a get, then you've got to do. Then you've set, got to modify that, the thing that you just got with the function, okay. and then you've got to do set. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So you want to do a get and set with a modify in between that. So you want to get the two functions out of the lens so you can pattern match the lens. And um, that's how I'd do it anyway. Um, so you called it like lowercase lens just there. Um, I would pattern match out the lens and get the two getter and setters out. So I'll show you how to do it. So you've got um, you've got this code here, All right? So what I'm saying is th this whole value here is of the type lens, and underneath that is two functions, All right? And uh, what I'm saying is you could pattern match them out like this. And actually, you can't call them set and get. I'd call them that. Okay. And that way, you've now got a set function, a get function, the modification function, and the target on which to do it. So what you want to do is you want to do a get from the target, so G on the target. That will give you the field. Then call modify. That, that's the, the modification function, F. And then you'll get a new field value. And then you want to, then you want to use set and set that field value on the target and that will that will update it with the modified value. Yeah, so it kind of sounds like those those functions are composing, right? So the Yeah, it is it is actually function composition. You can write it that way. So it'll be uh F of G is my target kind of thing. Yeah, it'll be uh yeah like uh set uh my target. Something it, that's not quite right. It'll be something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's just get all the types lined up, but that's the intuition for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you uh, serious about doing your uh, US license or anything? Yeah. When I next, I was going to do it when I came here. Uh -huh. um, except I broke my leg. Yeah. So, I, 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 as far as I know, all I've got to do is uh, come over here and and just meet the like the test standard. Right. How much time have you got? How much time have I Oh, 62 hours? Okay. Not, not many. Yeah. So I got a, uh, I'm on a CFI and I got a student feedback. Oh, yeah. He's working on his US license. Uh, so, 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 what do you mean? So, is he doing his British license first? or? No, he's already got his British license. He's oh, right. British military guy. Okay. Trying to get a job. Yep. Right. Uh, kind of the two main things, paperwork things, I think you got to get done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verification from Australia, CAA, prove that your license is valid. Okay. Then then is, is that additional paperwork than just showing my license? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, on right. the CAA side. They, yeah. They've got to give you something. Like oh, I see. Yeah. This is real. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to do a PSA letter here to prove it's not going to fly into a building or something. Yeah, yeah. So we've got the same, a similar thing. Yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't, his PSA paperwork. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. So, so you you do your CFI back at your home airport where you flew from? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I you know I hang around on the American forums, and it's just so much better over here for aviation. Yeah, so. We actually lived in New Zealand for a year and I got my New Zealand license over there. Right? Yeah. It was, it was fun flying around, but, you know, it's a, it's a small little country. Yeah, you know, yeah. There's only so much you can do with an airplane over right. there. Right. It's like, okay. Yeah. Went to the Kwame we came back. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, that flight on Tuesday was 900 nautical miles. So. Yeah, right. It took me a solid eight hours of flying. Yeah. I would never do with my family on board. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, hopefully I'm back here next year yeah. and uh, I'll get here early and yeah. give you a call or something. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm in Alabama. Right. Probably best to get the CAA paperwork sorted over Yeah, so it, if, I, if I'm going to be serious about it, I'll get all of that. Yeah, I have looked it up before, and yeah, so I know that because when Americans come to us, we ha they have it's called ASIC there. You got to get an ASIC, and that's the security thing. And I've got to wear an ASIC. Every you know, to walk around an airport, you have to wear a security badge and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll talk some more. Yeah, cool. All right. All right. <clears throat>
first. Already, because I don't understand the types of That's okay. So the, the goal here... No return, right? So okay, so which one are we looking at? FSTL. FSTL. Okay. So what? <clears throat> so there is no doctors, so I'm... Well, there's, yeah, there's not really, right? So, uh, what does it do? It takes a lens. All right, so let's ask, let's ask this question, right? What is a lens? All right, so what is a lens? A lens from A to B is the pair of functions that go A to B to A and also um, A to B, right? So the first one is the setter and the second one is the getter. Yeah, that's the setter. So th this is set on that target type, that field, that value. Okay. And this one here is from this target type, get that value. Okay. Now what you've got here is you've got a pair, right? So pair being the target type. So in, this, in, the, in the position of A, oops, I'm gonna do this, right? And this, and this, and in the position of B, you've got X, right? So now the thing you need to write is, uh, is that, right? you need to write a pair of functions that go like that. So given the pair of x and y and an x, return a pair x and y. And, and clearly that's just knock that one out and put that new one in. All right, so okay. given, yeah. that's, that's setting the x in the pair. And this one here is just get it back out. Okay, so I could just do a pattern match. Uh, you do construction. You call, so lens has one constructor called lens. You'll okay. call that constructor and you'll pass in these two values. All right, so I'll show you how to do this one, right? So you've got a uh, FSTL, and that's it. That's it here, right? You've got to write that. That's a, that's just a couple of notes that you've got to do. There you go. All right. So basically, you you want to say, well, how am I going to get a lens? And there's only one way to get a lens uh, from nothing, which is the call in the constructor. In this position, you need to write this function here. All right. So that's given the pair of x and y then the x that you're going to update, all right? Now you need to return a new pair, x and y, all right? And this one here is actually simply just ignored. You don't care. So in this pair of x and y and this new x, substitute the new x in. And in this position here, it's given the pair of x and y, return the x. And you actually don't care about the y in that case. And that's that. All right. And I, I assure you that that satisfies the lens laws. So, you, yeah, you can write a proof if you like, but it does. <clears throat> okay. How's everyone going? Going good? Okay, good. I'm glad. I know it can be hard to get started. Yeah, um, so in the, in the real lens, in the package lens, it, it is just a function. Um, and, the, and the answer is, is because I, um, it would upset the exercises. Like, for example, you've got to write composition and so on. So uh, if, if it was the other way around, composition would already be done, for example. Yeah. <clears throat> You coming? Bring it on. <clears throat> okay, modify. Uh, that's the get set lens, right? So modify. Okay. Whoa, shit! Oh, don't do that. Oh, fuck that. Hurt. Yeah, I'm alright. <sighs> um. Okay. So. Get lens, yeah. Set lens, yeah. Set function dot PBA. Um, the only the only thing which is probably probably not going to make too much difference is to pattern match the lens to get. So you're getting the uh, even that's not going to be. Yeah, I mean that there really isn't a way. Yeah, I mean if you. Not really, no. I think that's my phone making that stupid noise. No. 
No, it's coming out the speakers oh. through the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it did it yesterday as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, not really, other than you, you could just do expression substitution and change a few things around. Okay. You don't need parentheses there. Okay. Um, that's all I can really see. Okay. Yeah. There's really not. I mean, that, that, so that, that there's not because of the way this lens is structured, which is the pair of getter and setter, right? So th this is where your code has to get messy. If it was the other way around, it's it's the get and set that is messy. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're doing the hard work here. Okay. Yeah. But I'm, I'm on the right track. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's okay. How are you? Are we starting quite well? I, I, I yeah. think, I think cool. it's better than here. Oh, right, eh? Yeah. So these modify and these operators, yep. are these in like a lens library? If that, I that, the lens library? Yeah, they're, they're usually different names though, uh -huh. and maybe slightly different types. Uh -huh. But the, the concept is there, yeah. Okay. Um, so, for example, in the optic representation of a lens, the modifier function is is itself the lens. Like that's the definition of it. Mm. So there's nothing to do oh, there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So and it, it looks a little bit different as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so like this, I think uh, the exercises here operate on a tuple. So if, um, uh, what do you mean by that? No. Well, there's the, no, it's the FSTL. This. Oh, the the tester. Yeah. 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 The, yeah for this test data. Right? Yeah. So, so if I if I want to use uh, like I often have my own data types right right, right. Maybe, maybe ten fields yeah so if I if I want to use these get set modify functions on this data structure yeah I I must define yeah, like ten functions uh, one for each yeah, ten yeah. lenses yeah I must have yeah so the, and there's library support to or derive those mm -hmm. without having to write them yeah but yeah there'll be ten so if, if if you've got a record type where you've got ten fields then there will be ten lenses. Um, if you've got a sum type where you've got, say, five constructors of a sum type, an algebraic data type, yeah. um, you'll have five prisms. This is yeah. for what type? So, uh, uh, so you know, it, yeah, type. like either. Do you know the either data type? Yeah. So it's like left and right. Right. So that you get two prisms. You get the left prism and the, and the okay. right prism. Um, and then when you've got like a list, like a many values, you get a traversal for all those values. Um, and some for some structures, you have more than that, right? So... You could have a record, and within that record, you have many things that nest down mm -hmm. as well. So you have both the lenses and the traversals. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, is to write all of those lenses and traversals somehow, and from that you, get, you automatically get a lot of functions. Mm -hmm. like you, the whole library comes with So if you, if, you, if, you, if you can imagine that those lenses and traversals are for free, they just come for free, then, and you needed to like go and update all the strings in the structure or something like that, then you, all you've got to do is call modify and then, then the update function, and then you, that's all you've got to write. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole point. Can, can you compose yeah. uh, lenses and traversals and prisms? Yes. Okay. So it, in that, it's a, it, it, that's a good question because the way in which they compose is really interesting. So if you compose a lens and a prism, mm -hmm. you'll get a traversal. So if you've got a lens and, you, and a prism and you just go dot prism, okay. the type of the thing that comes back, it automatically turns into a traversal. For example... Pardon? <laughs> you want me to explain it over there? I'm saying, are you going to explain it over there? I, I can, yeah, if you would like me to. Sure. <laughs> Why is that? Pardon? When, when yeah. It's time to, okay. um, I, it, well, when, if I was to explain that from scratch, I would do it a bit differently. But yeah, I'm happy to explain why that is. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. 
Because that is so that's really obvious. Intuitively, that really well, I if I said to you like, um, what is it again? So a lens is that there's two things. Yeah, I'll I'll do it up there okay. so I can write. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One other question I had. Like, yeah. If I have to manually write, like if I have a, a type with these five extra you know, five fields. Yep. And then I have to write a lens for each field. Yeah. Then why not just write a custom modifier function for each of these things? Instead of the lens? Instead of, do, instead of doing it for lens, yeah. Uh, because, so, because, because like, we get composability? Or, so and so uh, just to understand your question, right? So you're saying instead of writing a lens for all five fields, why not write just five modifier functions? Yeah. Th that is a lens. I mean, all you need is those functions. Mm-hmm. So the, the definition of a lens is that function. Okay. It's just that we have a name for that function, which is lens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll show oh, you. The, there's a there's a hierarchy that I'll. Once you have that function, you can apply. Okay. Yeah, you can compose those functions just as regular function composition. I'll show you. I'll show you the hierarchies. Just if if there's if there's an interest in it. So, well, that's fun. No. So th th um, some people were asking if you're interested um, about the um, this is the real lens library like the real the one that I use at, at my work and many other people do and contribute to and so on um, and in this library you'll find uh, this wonderful diagram um, which if you use lens enough you'll end up memorizing uh, because it's just too so useful and you'll see that you can see there's like these directional arrows going on and the point of these arrows is um, is, is the, it's in the direction of specialization, right? So, for example, all prisms are ISOs. All lenses are ISOs. And, uh, and so on. Um, all, uh, is that right? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's the other way around, sorry. Hang on, what am I thinking? I've, done, I've got confused about this before. If you have a lens and you needed to give it to something that expects an ISO, you can do that. It's, although that's not true there, so that's what's confusing me. It's the other way around, right? It's not. <laughs> well, I, I, another way of reading this, I think it. The, the reason I'm confused is because that's not how I read this diagram anyway. It's just that when you compose, say, a lens and a prism, you, you find the arrow at which they unify, and, and the answer here is a traversal. So if you compose a lens and a prism, you will get a traversal. Um, if you compose a traversal and a getter, you will get a fold, for example. And by compose, I mean the dot function, function composition. Uh, it's quite a useful diagram. Um, but all, all of these, um, in, in the definition of all of these sort of unify at, at one thing, which is, uh, which is, uh, it's, uh, what is it, A to F, B, except that's not arrow, that's actually P. So they all, all unify at this uh, at this structure, right? So a lens is when P is a function, an arrow, and, and, and there's a functor constraint on F. And, and the, way, the reason all that composition works out is you put all these things together and these, these P's start changing or having constraints on them. And uh, these F's also change to get constraints on them. Um, I'll, I'll actually, I'll install the lens package and I'll, I'll show you just for interest. Uh... 